Another episode of Words of Grace starts now. Featuring a new, grace-filled message each week as Acts 433 Church brings the gospel to you through the teaching ministry of Dr. Matthew Webster. It's wonderful to be with you in the Word of God for part six of the original Influencer series. This is a series for the most part have featured some prominent people in the Bible that you might not have ever heard of before. And just because you might not have ever heard of them, it doesn't mean that these individuals, these men and women, weren't incredible influencers in their time. So much so that they even had an impact on your life and on mine, and we might not have even been aware of it. I imagine that when we get to heaven one day, the impact that we've had on others and the impact they've had on us will be known and it will be celebrated. For today's message, we'll once again examine a true influencer, uh, one that you've probably never heard of, none other than Yehoshiba. Now, in my decades upon decades of preaching from God's Word, I have never once uttered her name that I can recall. And in all of my time of being a Christian, I've never heard her name mentioned in a sermon, at a Christian conference, or a Bible study that I belong to. But today is a new day. Today is a day where we're going to learn some exciting things about Yehoshaba, and I'm excited to lead you all into this. So for Yehoshaba's story, we venture into 2 Kings chapter 11. Oh boy, we have a lot of difficult Hebrew names to pronounce that are going to sound differently than they are spelled. When Athaliah, the mother of Axaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family. But Yehosheba, the daughter of King Yoram, the sister and, and sister of Achaziah, took Yehoash, son of Achaziah, and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Athaliah, so he was not killed. He remained hidden with his nurse at the temple of the Lord for six years while Athaliah ruled the land. So you might ask, well, who is Athaliah? Well, let me tell you, she is the offspring of two of the most evil, wicked people to ever live on this planet. Imagine if Adolf Hitler and Queen Mary I had a baby. It would have been Athalia. Uh, she is the one who brutally murdered, uh, if you didn't know who Queen Mary was, Queen Mary I, she was the one who is referred to as Bloody Mary. She brutally murdered Protestants for their faith. And so that's why I used Queen Mary I and uh, Adolf Hitler as an example of uh, where Athalia might have come from uh, as far as her evil wickedness. She's on par with, with those individuals. And so Athalia was the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. So you can see right there, there are two evil people. And she was the queen mother she goes ahead and she murders all of her grandchildren, except the youngest, Yehoash, uh, who is secreted away by his aunt, whose name is Yehosheba, and, and then she'll take over the kingdom. So there is no resistance that is made to her, and she retains the sole authority for six years. And what she does in the six years is she'll maintain the worship of Baal. We learn this in 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 18. And this worship of Baal, it was introduced by Yehoram into Judah and supported by Achaziah, 2 Kings 8, 27. Oh my goodness, if there ever was an opportunity for a Netflix show to be created, this is that story. I mean, they've got wonderful things like the Ten Commandments, Noah, and all these other stories in the Bible, but this is the one that needs to get made. Uh, where is this one? We have Athaliah the Destroyer. 
she was married to Jehoram, and he is the son of Jehoshaphat. And probably in the lifetime of his father, uh, this was made to cement the alliance that concluded between Ahab and Jehoshaphat against the Syrians, 1 Kings 22, verses 2 through 4. So she inherited much of her mother Jezebel's character. This is what we'll learn. So how this worked was on the death of Axazia, she found herself in a position where she was seriously imperiled. The crown would have passed naturally to one of her grandchildren, the eldest son of Axazia. She would have lost her position of queen mother, which would have passed on to the widow of Axazia, the mother of the new sovereign. So she goes, not on my watch. I'm about to lose my power and I'll just kill them all. She, and she did, except for one. She issued her orders and had all the members of the house of David put to death. The royal house had already been greatly depleted by Jehoram's murder of his brothers. We learn about this in 2 Chronicles 21.4 by Arab marauders in 2 Chronicles 21.17 and by Yehu's murder of the brethren of Akazia, 2 Kings 10, 14. But it is clear that Akazia has left several sons behind him. We have Satan that work trying to wipe out the messianic lineage that would bring about Jesus, but in enters a hero. The text says, but Yehosheba. Do you know what her name means? Yehosheba is Hebrew for Yahweh is an oath. The enemy, Athaliah, has a plan to steal, kill, and destroy, but God is a promise keeper, Yehosheba, and he will preserve the messianic lineage, Yeho Yehoash, so that we might be given life. I wanted to I want that to be what you say whenever the enemy comes against you, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yes, I might be facing this thing or that thing. Yes, I'm going through some things, but Yehosheba, my God, is an oath keeper. He's a promise keeper. Surely my God will deliver me. He'll rescue me for he has given me the victory in Jesus' name. And so come whatever may, my father is true to his word. And so I sing from my soul and I give him praise in every circumstance, but Yehosheba. And it says that, uh, but Yehosheba, the daughter of King Yehoram and sister of Akazia took Yehoash, son of Akazia, and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered. That's 2 Kings 11, 2. Now, who is Yehoash? Yehoash became the youngest king of Israel. He became king at age seven. He's the eighth king of Israel. And of the kings of Israel and Judah, there are so many, they almost all were evil. But what do you think about Yehoash? Well, let me give you a hint. God gave distinctive names to individuals to communicate a message. We have God is an oath, preserving the messianic lineage by saving Yehoash. And Yehoash's name means uh, Jehovah is given, Jehovah given. Does God ever give evil? God has given Israel King Yehoash. Now, here is a chart of the various kings. According to the chart you just saw, Yehoash did what was right in his youth. He would later make bad choices and do evil, but when God raised him up as king, he initially did what was right. So let's go back to the text in 2 Kings 11, 4. It says, In the seventh year, Yehoiada uh, sent for the commanders of units of a hundred, 
the Karites and the guards and had them brought to him at the temple of the Lord. He made a covenant with them and put them under oath at the temple of the Lord. Then he showed them the king's son. He commanded them saying, this is what you are to do. You who are in the three companies that are going on duty on the Sabbath, a third of you guarding the royal palace, a third at the Sir gate, and a third at the gate behind the guard, who take turns guarding the temple. And you who are in the other two companies that normally go off Sabbath duty and are all to guard the temple for the king, station yourselves around the king, each of you with weapon in hand, Anyone who approaches your ranks is to be put to death. Stay close to the king wherever he goes. Okay, so what we have here is we have the conspiracy of Jehoiada. And after waiting impatiently, we can be sure that he had to wait six long years for this moment to take place. He's seen the young prince grow from an infant to a boy of seven years of age. Jehoiada deemed that the time was come to, 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 to do this uh, right now. It was necessary that he makes these arrangements beforehand with extra special care. His first step was to sound the captains of the royal guard. To these men, five in number, 2 Chronicles 23, 1. He sends them secretly and uh, inwired them to confer with him in the temple on important business. Finding them well disposed to support his views on this, he revealed to them the fact that Yehoash had escaped the massacre of Akazia's sons and was still alive. They, he even allowed them to see him. And the result of this interview was that they put themselves at Jehoiada's disposal and they agreed that they were going to take their orders from him and not the queen mother. So let's keep going with the second part of the plan and tie it into 2 Chronicles 23. It says in verse 9 that the commanders of units of a hundred did just as Jehoiada uh, the priest had ordered. Each one took his men, those who were going on duty on the Sabbath, and those who were going off duty, and came to Jehoiada the priest. Then he gave the commanders of spears and shields that had belonged to King David, and that were in the temple of the Lord. The guards, each with weapon in hand, stationed themselves around the king, near the altar in the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Jehoiada... Uh, then proceeded to his second step of his plan. Either distrusting the bodyguard, which the captains commanded, or regarding it as insufficient in numbers, he gave them orders to visit the various cities of Judea. And he collected from them a strong force of Levites and other trustly persons and brought them to Jerusalem. Second Chronicles 23.2 where he would then, after they arrived, give them orders. This was done successfully, as it would seem, without in any way rousing the suspicions of Athalia. And that is key, because if she caught on to the plan, they would all be executed, including Jehoash. And so Jehoiada brought out the king's son, and he puts the crown on him. He presented him with a copy of the covenant and he proclaimed him as king. They anointed him and the people clapped their hands and they shouted, yeah, long live the king. The people of Judah rejoiced over Jehoash's appointment. And this is great. But how will Athaliah the destroyer respond? When Athaliah heard the noise that was made by the guards and the people, she went to the people at the temple of the Lord. She looked and there was the king standing by the pillar as the custom was. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king and all the people of the land were rejoicing and they were blowing trumpets. Then Athaliah tore her robes and called out, treason, treason. I love this. Why isn't this story on Netflix? Like I said, somebody makes some phone calls. Let's get this reenactment story told. 
You just lost your power. Jehoiada the priest ordered the, uh, ordered the commanders of a unit of 100 who were in charge of the troops. Bring her out between the ranks and put to the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest had said, she must not be put to death in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her as she reached the place where the horses entered the palace guards, and there she was put to death. Quickly, she is executed. The messianic lineage is preserved. But however, this is so interesting. This is fascinating to me. When we go to Jesus' lineage in Matthew chapter 1, where is Yehoash mentioned? He's not. If you have a moment, go ahead and pause the video and look in your Bible at Matthew chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. I'm going to also put it on your screen too. It says, And Jesse, the father of King David, David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of, of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah. And I probably butchered a bunch of those names, but there is a jump in the genealogy. I'll show you. Here is Matthew 1, 6 through 8. And here is the genealogy of Jesus. As you can see, I went ahead and put in a black box Joash, Jehoash, where he would belong, or where he, or I'm sorry, where he is on, on the chart, so you can see it because it's kind of tiny. In fact, I, I couldn't even see it very well. But there he is, and as you follow in Matthew 1, there is an absence of Jehoash mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. It goes from Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, and skips over three men. One is Jehoash. God actually blotted out their names from remembrance when we get to the Gospel of Matthew. So 2 Kings chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 says that Jehoash, he reigned in Jerusalem for 40 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years that Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Very interesting. 2 Kings 12 goes on to describe the various financial dealings of Jehoash. Now, King Jehoash's main achievement was making repairs to the temple, and you can learn about this in 2 Kings 12, verses 4 through 16. He also would go ahead and use a monetary gift to dissuade King Hazael of Aram, which is present-day Syria, from attacking Jerusalem. I'm getting such a workout with these names. <laughs> uh, what a challenge this has been. In 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 17 through 18, we, we learn about that. And so the tragedy of King Jehoash of Judah is that after his mentor and guardian Jehoiada had died, he began to then listen to wicked advisors. We should have seen this coming. We really should have seen it. It was kind of telegraphed that this might happen. Uh, because Jehoiada's name means Jehovah knows, that God knows. So when Jehoash sought after wicked advisors, this is when things went terribly wrong for him. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Whereas with Jehoiada, it is more like Psalm 1611. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Think about when he came to power as king. There was rejoicing. There was trumpeters. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You see, with God working through the priest, Jehoiada, we have Jehoash following after the ways of the Lord, doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord. And things were wonderful, but after he dies, he sought after wicked advisors. So we have Jehoash revived Baal and Asherah worship in Judah. We 
learn about that in 2 Chronicles 24, 17 through 19. And I've been flying through all of this. There's so much history here. And I'm referencing all of these different places in Scripture because I hope that you will uh, maybe take some time this week and look at some of these chapters and verses that I've described to even get more of a fuller picture of the story. I'm doing my very best in the limited time I have to kind of give you the, the whole overview of what's happened and the message for us. So God would send prophets to warn Yeho, Yehoash, but he doesn't listen to them. Finally, the prophet Zechariah, the son of, of the priest Yehoiada, brought God's word to Yehoash, but the king will callously order the son, son of his old friend to be stoned to death. Wow, a lot has changed in this man's heart in a very short amount of time. And so we have Yehoash, his reign did not end peacefully. His officials conspired against him and assassinated him in 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 20. Yeho Ye Yehoash's son Amaziah took over the throne, and Amaziah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but the Bible notes that he was more like his father Yehoash than his ancestor David. 2 Kings 14, 3 through 4. So inter interestingly enough, Amaziah interacted with the other uh, king, Yehoash, in the Bible. There was uh, another king, Yehoash. And you say, but why, Pastor Matt, why did God go through all the trouble to bring Yehoash when he knew that in the end things would go bad in his reign? Now, the answer is in the name of the person who saved Yehoash, Yehosheba, God is my oath. God saw you and God saw me and all of humanity and even in all of our failings, God is faithful. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. God saw our need and gave us the greatest, most costly gift he could give, his son, Jesus Christ. Because before the law was ever given, this is the oath that God made to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. You can trace the lineage of Abraham to Jesus, where all the people on the earth will find their blessing in him. Jesus ushered in the new covenant upon his death, and the new covenant was struck between God the Father and Jesus the Son, and so we are beneficiaries of Jesus's life. So in Christ, even if we have faithless moments like we all do, even if we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself, 2 Timothy 2, 13. God is my oath. Man messed up, Athalia arose and did wicked, but God is my oath. So God, what he did is he provided Yehoash, and he did right until the priest died, and then he did horrible things. However, remember, God is is my oath and so all the peoples on earth will be blessed through your your lineage abram even when there's some in your lineage leading up to christ that did wrong and so i've given my son in order to redeem humanity and i say hallelujah to that truth what a wonderful time it was spending a little bit of history, going back in history and seeing what God did, seeing how God was faithful and the names of those that God sent that had a vital role in preserving the messianic lineage. It continued to testify that God is faithful. God is faithful. May that message just bless you as you're going through some things, as things seem to be conspiring around you. Remember that God is faithful to his word. He is a promise keeper. You can always trust the word of the Lord. 
when the enemy has uh, raised up in power in Athalia, trust that God keeps his word always, Yehoshiba, uh, and he will provide because God knows. And that's why Yehoash had Yehoada. And it all was to plan to bring about salvation, Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and conclude our time together in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word, this story. This story is incredible, and it's never told. In fact, it should be told over and over again because in my limited time, I was just flying through it. And I didn't even really get to stop on the nuances within the story and some of the historical significance and, and the way that they did certain things and, and the brilliant plan of Jehoiada and how that speaks to God ordaining and God preparing and God leading and God protecting and preserving and everything. And it speaks to us in our lives when we feel like there's chaos and disorder and everything's crumbling and conspiring against us. We just need to anchor ourselves to your word, the promises you've made, because you are faithful to them each and every time. Uh, Lord, I thank you that even in the failings of Yehoash, we see that you still brought about Jesus Christ. And even in our failings, I thank you that you work all things together for our good because we are in Christ and your favor is upon us in our lives. Um, Lord, I know that there are some who needed to hear this message today. I thank you that the Holy Spirit can take something that's so complex, like the story that happened so many years ago, and it can be used to move hearts and to see your true nature and, and, and who you are and to, for us to just be filled in our hearts with your great love for us, your plan of salvation that you brought about. Uh, Lord, I also think of those individual characters and I'm so great of the announcement that you know, you know what we're going through uh, better than, than even we do. And, and so we can just, like Yehoash did early on, look to Yehoiada, look to you because you know, you know what we're going through and you'll provide an answer and a solution for us. I thank you for that. And I thank you for Yehoshiba in this story and the role that she played saving the life of Yehoash. And it was because you had a plan all along and her name testified that you keep your oath, you keep your promise. You kept your promise you made to Abraham and we are blessed today because of it. And so we say all honor and glory and praise is yours through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, amen.